edition of the Call-In Show presented by UGASports.com. This is Trent Smallwood. I'm Paul Meharry, and we are back with another big win for Georgia. Mm -hmm. Dogs haven't lost yet this season, Trent. Still undefeated. Still undefeated, uh, that, uh, although they, they didn't get off to a good start. They did not. We're going to dive deep into that. Which you could tell they didn't – they did. They were were not expecting um, Maurer or whatever his name is Brian to, Maurer, yep. to to come out and start throwing like that and and have the success through the air. I mean, he was pinpoint accurate in the first half, and um, and I I really think that 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 caught Georgia off guard. I thought they made some excellent adjustments at halftime, and and you saw the end result. But um, they played a lot better in the second half, but first half they struggled. Yeah, definitely. One of the big things for me, Trent, taken away from the game, I was up there. There's a lot of Georgia fans in the crowd. I think uh, when we finally came to a collective agreement in the press box, around 30 35%, I would say, was Georgia uh, inside the stadium. We said it last week. I said it in my game prediction. Georgia is becoming the school that comes to take over your school's football stadium. And that seems to be the case. Georgia's continuing that. But they get a home game against South Carolina coming up. We're going to dive into that as well. So we've, we're going to touch on Tennessee, touch on South Carolina, touch on maybe a couple prospects that are going to be there. The rest of that's going to be over on UGASports.com. But also, Trent, if anybody wants to call in, 620-UGA Talk can get you on the air with us. And uh, Trent, I guess let's start first things first until we get a caller. Let's go ahead and talk about Tennessee or the lack thereof up there in Knoxville and how the dogs were really able to take advantage of that in the second half. But the first half we saw – Tennessee does have some players, especially some guys that Georgia recruited, um, and they were able to kind of stay in it. Jim Chaney, I'm sure, had a lot to do with that as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you saw um, – uh, that's Tennessee's issue right now is depth. Um, their, their first group of guys, you know, they, they, have, they have a very talented uh, a group of 22. Um, yeah, I, I believe so uh, as well. But but after that twenty two, um, it goes downhill, and that's where that's where Georgia can bury opponents in the second half because they are so deep, and they rotate their linemen, they rotate their defensive linemen, they rotate their uh, backs, and you just they just wear on you, wear on you, wear on you, and eventually they're gonna break you. Uh, Trent, we've got some comments rolling in. Thanks for joining us, guys. I know you see the new background. We got it last week, but uh, I got it all centered up. Trent, looking uh, good. Looking good, man. I mean, it's looking good. It's looking good. Uh, but. Big thing is, like you said, the first 22 for Tennessee, 11 guys on offense, 11 on defense, I think they're a very solid bunch. They're a bunch that you can build upon up there in Tennessee. The depth is, is nowhere to be found in Tennessee, and I think that's Jeremy Pruitt's problem. I think that's going to be, if they fire Pruitt, that's going to be the next head coach's problem. You see it trickle now. They've had four bad head coaches, I think it is, since uh, uh, Fulmer. Right. Derek Dooley failed at trying to create it up there in Tennessee. Butch Jones failed brick by brick. Jerry Pruitt's gone up there with the attitude of, I'm going to turn this thing around my way or the highway type deal. We see that's not really working. Is Tennessee ever going to get back? I'm sure they will at some point, Trent, but it's just not competitive anymore. It doesn't look like it's going to be competitive for a while. I think the key, the key for Tennessee getting back, uh, number one, is – uh, getting a quality quarterback. Um, I, I do think that freshman, uh, uh, he has potential of being that guy. Yeah. I don't know if he is that guy, but he does have that. He does have potential of of being that guy. Um, and and second, they are having good recruiting classes, but the recruiting classes are are kind of top heavy. Yeah. So so you're looking at a recruiting class that's got three three five stars. Four or five rivals, one hundred, then seventeen three stars, or you know. So I think they have to have a more balanced class to build that depth. Because I mean, you look at Georgia, look at Alabama, look the way they recruited, look at Ohio State. You, you're you're building you're building that depth by recruiting. You might only land four or five stars this year, but you're landing sixteen in the rivals one hundred or something like that. So I mean, you have to build that depth not only with five stars, but just quality prospects in the rivals two fifty. Yeah, and uh, we're going to get to some of you guys' questions here in just a second. Melissa May, hey, she says, hey, Trent and Paul, how you doing, Melissa? Thanks for joining us. Uh, Reagan, going to the game on Saturday. We'll see you there. Tell us your section. Uh, I might get a photo of you up there in the fan. We can put you <laughs> in the gallery that rotates on here. Uh, Enrique and Ke Keith both say go dogs. Thanks for joining us, guys. Got a couple questions coming in uh, right here. Oh, talking about the Braves. We're not going there, guys. We're not doing it. We're, we're not doing it. Um, 
But Kovacevic, Kovacevic is back. Trent? He joins us every week. Yeah, he does. He does. He says, Tennessee is a recruiting vacuum. Don't have a natural recruiting base. Yeah. I mean, but, but, but Tennessee has some prospects. A lot of kids come out of Tennessee. Uh, I mean, but you can say the same thing about Alabama. They don't have a natural recruiting base. Correct. Uh, Correct. And they're, going to, they're going to Louisiana. They're going to Georgia. They're going to Texas. They're going to California. And it, it's going to take a while for Jeremy Pruitt to build that up. Well, but and also Alabama has that name recognition. They have national chambers. They have, they, right. they have Nick Saban. They don't have Jeremy Pruitt in a dumpster fire that right. they're trying to recruit to. Guys, give us a call. 620-UGA-TALK. We'll take your calls uh, as long as they're clean, friendly. Uh, you know, that, that would work. Keith says, uh, as long as Kirby is coaching, Tennessee is never coming back. I could see it, Keith. I really could after seeing that game, especially the second half, Trent. Georgia took over. They were still calling blitzes. And, and I do want to get to something, but I'll, I'll let you talk about that second half for a second. I want to get to something I saw on Twitter, too. So, in that second half, though, they took over. Somebody said in on Twitter said, so Dan Lanning and Kirby Smart were both – going crazy when Eric Stokes got the forced to fumble. Right. Run down the sidelines. Some Tennessee guys were saying they shouldn't be sending corner blitzes being up that much. Trent, what's your take on that? Because I got a hot take. Look, I mean, first off, you're trying to impress the the playoff committee every week, no matter what you're doing. So uh, <laughs> you've got to play four quarters. It don't matter how you're playing. It don't matter who's on the field. You have to play whether it's blitzing, whether it's passing the ball. You have to be impressive. Nobody's going to look at your score. Everybody's going to be – all these uh, voters and all that stuff's going to be like, Georgia wasn't impressive because, you know, they only beat Tennessee 27-14, and, and they really look uh, – They look pedestrian Preach. in the second half. So you, you're not only uh, – you're basically putting on an ad every week. You, you have to uh, – you've got to impress every week, week after week. And that's why that Clemson loss looks bad, and if Georgia would have – you know, went to Knoxville and, and won by a touchdown, that doesn't look good on their resume. Correct. My hot take on that is, was Tennessee still trying to score, Trent? Of course they were. Oh, they were. Okay, so Georgia was trying to stop them from scoring. And by sending a corner blitz, that stops them from scoring, right? I mean, Sometimes. Uh, uh, it, it did on that play. Okay, so Tennessee's going to keep trying to score. Georgia's going to keep trying to score. Both teams had different reasons for trying to score. Tennessee was trying to come back in the game, while Georgia, like Trent said, trying to impress that playoff committee. Because right now, Trent, there's a lot of teams. We're going to get to that, too. Uh, but overall thoughts on Tennessee. We'll kind of shift forward to South Carolina. Overall thoughts on the game? I mean, uh, I, I really thought, uh, and, and I'm going to say this, I really think Jake Fromm is, is, should be a Heisman contender. And it's, and it's not because – He's not going to put out the gaudy numbers. He's not, but the the pro progress he's made since he took his first snap in Athens to last year to this year is unbelievable. Just watching him navigate a game, watching him go through his progressions, just how calm he is in the backfield, and, and it, having that uh, offensive line helps. I mean, he's been sacked one time all year, but watching him just just navigate the offense is it, it's it's something you watch in the NFL on Sundays. It's just amazing. Yeah, no, the one thing that I took away, kind of the same as you, was when he got to call his own offense, that hurry-up offense, totally night and day. And we talked about it on the show last week. I even tweeted it out, making a joke about it, saying, I guess Kirby listened to us. Because that right there, when they go that really fast, you know, four-minute offense, two-minute offense, no-huddle offense, NASCAR offense, whatever you want to call it, to where they're not, you know, taking 25 seconds off of each play clock, Jake Fromm is in his element. He looks like a totally different quarterback, and you saw that against Tennessee. Overall, his stats look great. Um, I don't think you can ask for much more from Fromm. I, I said on 11 Alive uh, Sunday night, I thought it was his best performance of his career. It's close. There's, there's been better ones, maybe more clutch ones, but just overall just steady. You know, you couldn't ask for anything more out of him. I think this is one of his best ones. So. Huh. I mean, even even his passes that he missed, it, I mean, they were on target. They were, they were great throws. I mean, it was just a, a just watching it and then rewatching the game. Yeah, it's like uh, watching the next Peyton. day. It's it's just unbelievable. It's, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, like watching, watching Drew Brees go through uh, uh, just his progressions. And I mean, the the one throw he made, and, and it wasn't a long throw, but he he uh, stepped up in the pocket and he threw a sidearm, just a sidearm dot right across the middle to Brian Harrion. And I was like, I mean. 
just, just he, he just had a fantastic year. Eight touchdowns, zero interceptions, completing 78% of his passes. And, uh, I mean, we can always go back. George hadn't played nobody, but George has probably strengthened the schedule up to this point, you know, top two, three in the country. So we got some more comments rolling in, Trent. And like I said, guys, give us a call, 620 UGA Talk. UGA Talk. Where's Gerald? Gerald, I stopped in Lafayette on the way back. We stopped at a pilot gas station in Lafayette. I thought of you, Gerald. Give us a call, man. Give us a call. <laughs> uh, Enrique is talking about the game with Melissa. Melissa is actually not a fan of Georgia. Remember that, right? But she yet comes in here and acts civil, so we'll take her. That's what Enrique said. She's just there to see Paul. Yeah, exactly. Kovacevic <laughs> says if Fromm is at Cal or Oregon, they would have to track his yardage with an odometer. You might be right. You might be right. I mean, if he's in the right offense, you never know, um, especially with how we see what he can do in that hurry-up offense. The, the sky is the limit on that. Um, let's see. Keith, I like this one. Keith, this might be the uh, most valuable comment of the day so far. Haven't had a bunch yet, but he says Fromm's new name should be Clicker because he's studying his opponents. The little click noise you make <laughs> back and forth. He's right, though, dude. He's right. I mean, he, he is a film freak. You see it on the field, and you see what a third-year starter can do for your program. Um, and it's kind of a different tone we're taking this week, Trent, compared to last week. We were wanting to see more from Fromm. From from and we saw it. I mean, it, you look at that game, and I, and I know there's still critiques of the offense, um, and there's always going to be critiques of the offense. Uh, it's point blank. Georgia has so many playmakers that you can't get – you can't – I mean, they can't get the ball every week. I mean, it, it, you got James Cook, Demetrius Robertson, Lawrence Cager. Uh, what a what a target Lawrence Cager has uh, become. I mean, yeah. just amazing. You got George, yeah. uh, Dominic Blaylock, uh, Pickens – Eli Wolf's become a target in the passing game. Then you got uh, all the running backs. I mean, you just can't they, – they, they can't get carries. I, I thought Zamir White looked really good. Zamir um, looked great. Uh, Zamir White was running hard. I mean – It's a different type of run, man. It is. I think uh, Brian Harry and that long run was uh, very impressive. Uh, and you got guys like Kenny, Kenny McIntosh who probably play at any school in the SEC, maybe outside of Bama, that is sitting up there on the bench that, that's not getting snaps. But – Guys, I mean, that, there's just way too many guys. I mean, there's way too many guys that you can't touch them all. I mean, I, there's going to be complaints. I would like to see the offense go a little bit more vertical. I think uh, I think they're going a little bit too much horizontal right now. Um, I, but uh, I, the pass, you saw what Demetrius Robertson can do to one-on-one -on -one coverage in the slot. Um, I mean, he straight up burnt that slot uh, that slot cornerback on that kind of out fade. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, you see what the guys can do. George Pickens is a nightmare in one-on-one. -on -one. Lawrence Cager is a nightmare because he's so physical, and he knows how to use his body in that game. So, um, I mean, just – I'd like to see him go more horizontal, but I was impressed by the offense with the we put on the field Saturday. I was too. I was too. And uh, we got a couple comments coming in. Hot Rod for Heisman. <laughs> Kirby said it. I mean, I, I it was tongue-in-cheek. It was tongue-in-cheek to anybody who does not think it's tongue-in-cheek. It was. But, um, you know, Kirby said it. Why biggest not? weapon in the country. I mean, he, he, <laughs> he is, dude. He, if there's anything less than automatic, I mean, you, you look at Alabama every week and you see the field goal kick in game, and it's just kind of, you never know what you're going to get. You know what you're getting with uh, Blankenship every week, and I think that's the reason why uh, Kirby calls his number, even, the, even in the short yard situation, because he knows what he's going to get. We got a, another comment coming in from, where was it? Char D. McDennis says, Paul, you're looking spiffy with Wes on 11 Alive. I don't know how much I paid you for that, but I appreciate that comment. I will Venmo you after the show. Adam Gingrich, what's up, man? He says, Fromm is like fifth on the Heisman board. You think he's got a really good shot to win it past Tua, Jalen, and Justin Fields? Short answer, no. 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 This is a guy, we're, we're still talking about Fromm here, who his best – Passing yards in a game. I looked it up. What I was up in the uh, press box Saturday, three hundred and twenty-six yards. That's his best passing performance. I, that that wowed me. I thought he had more than that in one, at least one game. Three hundred twenty-six. Was that against Alabama or Missouri? I think it was Missouri. You know, it, here's the here's the here's the thing, and this is what it's all going to come down to. George, Alabama's going to put the ball in. His hand or uh, into his hands every week. Ohio State's gonna put the ball in, uh, and they're they're dual threat guys. They're gonna let them kind of. It's gonna be like more like street ball. Yeah. But they're going out and letting them play. 
Jake Fromm's running a pro style offense. Jake Fromm is uh, uh he's getting the guys in the right play. You're not seeing these other quarterbacks doing what he's doing, moving guys before the play. Um, it's it's a pro style offense. You're not going to see many pro style offenses win Heisman. I mean, uh, quarterbacks. Not anymore. Not anymore. You're just not going to see it. Um, you you're going to see the flashy running gun type guys. But where it's all going to show, where it's all going to pay off, is it come December when when Probably the Heisman's already decided, or Heisman's almost decided. But when you when you get a guy like Jake Fromm go up against Tua, that's when it's all going to be decided. Because I think I think Jake Fromm is having a he's been having a better year than Trevor Lawrence, hands down. Oh yeah, well a lot of quarterbacks have trend. But anyways, um, where was it? Oh, William H says first half is always slow for the dogs, and depth takes over. You're exactly right. That's that's quintessential. That's right. exactly what happened in this game. And, and I'll say depth. And adjustments. I think Kirby Smart is excellent with adjustments, and I thought that was one thing that really bit Mark Rick staff in the in the tail. Yep. Um, you always saw Mark Rick teams come out fast, and the, and and then, then they ended slow. But you always see Kirby Smart team. I mean, Kirby Smart's team. They always end fast. Um, besides a couple games, but uh, but they're always making good second second half adjustments. I mean, you you saw Tennessee; they were totally bogged down on offense, and that it was mainly to do with what they were doing on defense. They were showing different stuff, and they really confused my Reds quarterback. No, I think uh, I think one of the biggest things for Georgia was when they were running into the tunnel for halftime. I kind of thought to myself, like. Kirby's going to light a fire under these guys' ass. And that's exactly what he did. They came back out and really showed up big. Uh, Koa Sevek, do you guys see our substantial improve? Do you guys see a substantial improvement in our pass rush? First off, Koa Sevek, you need to call in. You said you would last week. You're eating a ribeye. You're not doing it this week. Call in, man. 620 UJ Talk. Anyways, so s- substantial improvement in pass rush from last year? Yeah. And the thing about it, you're not going to see that, you're not going to see the Clemson Auburn. Uh, the the pass rush because they're playing with a four man front and I know Georgia's got four man coming all the time but you're not having the split defensive end yet those defensive end are split outside the tackle for them and they're straight rushing that's not that's not what Georgia's doing they're more uh they're more compacted in there they're not outside the tackle they're not in that seven oh, got a call coming in, seven Trent. tech and uh why is it not playing call from there is. Sorry, sorry to cut you off there, Trent. Darius is on the line with us. Darius, how's it going, man? You're on with Trent and Paul. How you doing? Good, man. It's it's Darius, right? I heard that right. Yes. All right, man. What's going on? Yeah, um, I've been a Georgia fan for a long time, and I've seen a lot of great Georgia teams. I really believe this can be one of our best teams we ever had. Um, people debate if it's as good as 2017 team. I think it's more talented, you know, outside of World Class Smith and DeAndre Baker on defense, but I think it's more talented, more deep. Um, but I got a question. Um, the national media, I don't know if I've been listening to it, but I feel like since Notre Dame game, after we beat them, the talk wasn't about we'd be the top 10 team. Now, I thought, we, you know, we were conservative on offense in the first half. You know, we opened it up in third quarter, and then, you know, we took control of the game. But the national media, the talk was Notre Dame played great. They stuck with Georgia. They were impressed by Notre Dame. And, you know, I know, you know, early, it probably doesn't matter, but it's just, I don't understand why. I know, Listen, we were a 14-point, you know, favorite. We won by six. But look at the game. If Todd Simmons does not drop that punt, Notre Dame does not score – probably to the, you know, the last drive when he scored to cut the lead in 10-6. We dominated that game. Notre Dame could not move the ball, was, you know, set for two drives at the end of the half, at the end of the game. And if Kirby goes for it on fourth and one, which he should have, keep it sneaking, give it to Samir White, that's automatic. I don't know why he doesn't, do, you know, get Jake from under center and just keep it sneaking. I mean, that works almost every time. We probably win by 17 or 14 more I don't know, man. Just, I see people dropping us, you know, every week. Like, people, you know, in their polls, Georgia is number four, five, six. Even though we haven't lost, we have the best win. You know, mm-hmm. I know it doesn't matter now, but I, I don't know if y'all noticed that. If it's just me or is that, you know, 
Y'all notice that national media, how they talk about Georgia after Notre Dame win. Like, as we, you would thought we lost the game the way people were talking about us. Yeah, Darius, but, real quick, um, you're exactly right, man. Um, but the biggest thing is, I think, Trent, is now you're starting to see people. I especially saw it. I saw it myself, Darius. Uh, the college football final show that Jesse Palmer and Galloway, and I don't know who the host is, but um, Jesse said – Georgia's winning against Notre Dame is starting to look better and better. Even though I'm pretty sure Notre Dame was on a bye, but they had beaten Virginia the week before. Right. I completely agree with you, Darius. And we're going to hang up the phone right quick, but uh, we appreciate you listening, my man. Um, but we're going to answer the rest of the question uh, over on the page, if that's okay. All right. Thank you. Go, dogs. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Yeah, and, and also, uh, uh, other than that on the commentary, um, Blackledge uh, – um, Todd Blackledge. Todd, Todd Blackledge. Yep. He he made a comment, and he's seen. I believe he's seen Ohio State and Clemson this year. I believe, but he said Georgia's the best team he's seen, um, and and that's big. That's a big compliment right there. Uh, he, here's the thing about Kirby Smart team, and this is the way they've been the last two years. They get better as the year goes on. Um, they're they're not I as can, good. I can agree with they're that. They're not as good at the beginning of the year, and last year. You remember everybody talking, something's missing about this team. Something is missing. And, I mean, you, of course, you, you've lost Roquan Smith. You've lost Lorenzo Carr. you lost all those leaders on the team. Something was missing at the beginning of the year last year. But it it finally came back together towards the end of the year um, until the loss to Alabama. But there is – I think this team's more talented. I think this – I said it before the first game of the year. I said this – I believe this is Kirby Smart's best team. Um, just Just from a talent standpoint – and you're starting to see uh, some guys step up uh, in big ways. I thought Tay Crowder's played a lot better the last couple of weeks. Uh, but you're also seeing uh, Monty Ross has, has played very good. Um, Aziz Ojolari is starting to play. I mean, I, I'm not sure uh, either one of the Georgia outside linebackers between Lorenzo Carter and Davin Bell who are playing at his level right now he's playing at because he's playing really good. Um, but. I Go ahead, go ahead. But but you're starting you're starting to see this team really come together. Um, I, and they have a chance to be special this year. Uh, and I know the media, is, the media is the media. The media is going to talk about the guys who are going to beat somebody by sixty every weekend, week out. And that's just not what Georgia's going to do. But as long as Georgia keeps pounding, 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 what was what does Kirby say? Chop the wood, keep yeah. chopping. Uh, they're going to be fine. I, I don't see a game on their schedule that they they should lose this year. Uh, I think the game at Auburn is a scary one. Just because of the atmosphere at Auburn, they're going to come and they're going to come ready to play. I think uh, they were kind of exposed against Florida this past weekend. But I don't see a game on their schedule they should lose. And, and the key for Georgia is who cares what the media is saying? Keep winning and uh, everything's going to play out itself. Trent, I know you said just like the years past with Kirby, we've always thought something was missing and then finally it just wasn't missing anymore. Everything looked like a complete football team and you know we saw that. Are we there yet? I don't think we're. I don't. I don't think we're at that point yet. I, I still think there's some things missing. It, I, as far as communication, in the secondary, and I think that might have to do with DJ Daniel being back there, and he's a newcomer. Um, I think the the communication back there has been a little bad because they had some blown coverages. Um, they've had some guys playing in the wrong coverage. Uh, they're playing that combo coverage, and and a guy doing the wrong thing. But I, I think it's getting close. I think the. I think they're getting the right combination of receivers on the field. I think they're getting the right combination of. Of, of what running back needs to get this many carries and w when they need to go to those type guys. Um, one thing I'd like to see is, uh, and I think Brian Herrien uh, runs hard, but I'd, I'd like to see more Zamir White on those short uh, yardage because uh, Herrien hadn't, hadn't had a lot of success, and I think yeah. it's mainly because he just lowers his head and tries to run like a bull in a china cabinet straight through the hole. And yep. uh, I think you – yeah, yes, you're, you you got to get that one yard. You're fighting for that one yard, but you also got to have your eyes up and uh, and, and look where you're going because he ran right in the back of Justin Schaefer and, and on that fourth and one. He did. He did indeed. Trent, we got a couple comments coming in here. It's really just people talking smack a little bit to each other about their teams in Georgia. But um, Byron Dean Butler says, this team definitely has a chance to be one of uh, Georgia's best teams if we continue to improve and grow. I agree. I think that – the biggest thing that Georgia fans need to realize is you need Tyson Campbell back. Yes. And, and we didn't think we, – Trent, we didn't think – I didn't think I would be saying that. I thought, honestly, at this point of the season, if he was not hurt, he might have lost his job to another guy. Right. 
you need Tyson Campbell back. He's a big time threat. Uh, we got a phone call coming in, guys. Let me answer that. Call from James. Hey, James, you're on with uh, Paul and Trent. How's it going, man? Great. How you guys doing? Good, man. Good. Are you a member over at UGASports.com? Um, not a member, but I'm a avid uh, reader and listener to uh, all you guys and everything you put out there. I think so. this is like the third time I've asked you that, James. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe one day I'll get you, brother. What's up, man? No, I, uh, I, I've been listening to or reading the comments and listening to some of the callers. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the perception is that that everybody wants to see Georgia be in this high-flying offensive uh, football team. And uh, we're we're not built uh, that way fundamentally. We're, we're built to wear you down physically and then step on your throat when we have chances. Now, where I'll contradict myself on that is I think we have the playmakers – own offense to be able to blow the top off the defense when we choose to this year as opposed to um, years previous. Um, but in a lot of ways, I, I really don't think that the offense has been totally uncovered yet. I don't think they've let all the cats out of the bag, so to speak. I think they've done exactly what they've needed to do to win ball games. And um, basically, because uh, they the coaching staff knows that they that they're far more superior uh, talented wise than the teams we've been facing. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's like uh, in any other year. You got you got some young guys on the team, and um, you're sl- you're slowly putting more stuff in each and every week, and that and, and you're going to see the offense. Um, y- it's going to grow each and every week because there's going to be different uh, elements that, that Coley's uh, putting in the game plan. And, and you have to do that. you got to take it slow with guys like uh, George Pickens and um, – um, Blaylock. And Blaylock. Even, Eli all your, Wolf. I mean, all your, all your young guys or you're just your newcomers in general, I think you – you have to take it. You have to take it slow. And and, uh, and if you look on the outside, most of their playmakers, but outside of Charlie Warner, um, are are newcomers. Yeah, brand um, new. Basically, I mean, you, even yep. Lawrence Cager has taken a while to. Uh, it, it, it took him four games to start to, sh- to show, or three games to show what he's really capable of, and now he's kind of that go-to guy for Jake Fromm when when he's in a pinch, but. Uh, I, I think you're going to see different elements put in uh, each and every week. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit um, uh, more usage of certain players. Like, like I, w- I would love to see more usage of James Cook. But I think there's more yeah. uh, going to be unwrapped in this offense, and, and I think it's only going to get more special as it goes on. James, thanks for the question, brother. Maybe one day we'll get you over to UJSports.com, man. 27 cents a day, baby. Yeah, I'll, I'll get there, man. You got to keep working on me. I'll, All right, I'll get man. there. All right, take it easy, my man. Two good night, good dogs. Yep. Trent, you're exactly right. I think one of the biggest things that Georgia fans have to realize is, just like you said with Cager, Jake Fromm has his go-to guy every year. We've seen it now. We saw Javon Wims, we saw Riley Ridley, and then we saw we're seeing Cager. If you're a defensive coordinator, you're going to hone in on that guy, and that's where you need a guy like Miko from last year. Um, to step up. Who's that going to be? Could that be Blaylock? Could that be Robertson? Could that be Pickens? I think you have three really good choices. I think one choice that shouldn't be on the docket until further notice is Tyler Simmons. Not to call him out, but he did not have a good game, did not have a good game against Notre Dame. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, maybe let's try to use him differently. Maybe use James Cook instead. Got a call. Call from Gerald. Oh, Gerald. Gerald, my friend. How you doing, brother? Yeah, how you doing? You like that song? Yeah, I guess so. Gerald, I, I stopped uh, in I stopped in Lafayette coming back from the game at that pilot. You know where I, you know where I was at? And why? I I think it's a flying J in Lafayette. I stopped there on the way back from the game. I thought mm-hmm. of you. You don't know where that's at? No. 
The Flying J Gas Station, Big Gerald. Oh, yeah. I can't name that so much. I mean, the the one with all the semis. Keep up with it. Yeah, the one with all <laughs> the semis. Oh, well, the one with all the semis, Gerald. That's where we stopped. I just thought of you. What's, what's, what's going on, Gerald? What's on your mind? Sorry to get you off track. Well, uh, hey, uh, very nice call. <clears throat> I was watching another show, Georgia show. Yeah, uh, somebody brought something in it that I, I've been wondering about myself. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. The Andre Swift's a good running back, great running back. But he just, just seems like he has trouble picking up third and one or fourth and one. What? I, he, I, he's like a, I, I don't think said, I don't think DeAndre Swift's been in on those plays. Uh, not, I mean, uh, he might have been on a one or two, but I think it's been uh, no, Brian Herring most of the time. No, for the year he's two for seven. What they said on third and one, fourth and one combined. Really? Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I, that's, I, a, that's, inter- that's an interesting I thought I don't want to ever notice that. And what it is, he don't hit the... He tries to look for opening to start with. Well, you can't do that on short yard. You just got to hit go, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and and that is where I would like to see more usage of a uh, uh, big um, Zeus right there because, I mean, he is running. He's got that... Uh, uh, that low center gra- gravity like Nick Chubb had where he can just get those extra yards, just how strong his lower half is. And that's nothing against Swift or Harry because they're both they're both well-built kid. But, th- I mean, they're, oh, yeah. they're all different type backs. And um, and, and, and you need that. It's kind of like that role player. I mean, it, you just need those type of role players that, that's going to come in and, and pound the rock in those situations. And I think Zeus got a, uh, should should be that guy moving forward uh, if it was up to me, but just based on what I saw, I think I think Zeus could really handle that that uh, that part. You, uh, but I, 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 it would help. They wish wouldn't run right up the middle every time, and they know that's where they're going. Well, I, I think it also would help if if we if we would see more of a spread sp- spread the defense out a little bit. Uh, I just. I don't like the jumbo the jumbo look just simply because if one guy misses an assignment it kind of blows it up. You you can afford a little bit of uh uh somebody not to totally do their job. If you spread the if you spread out, get the linebackers a little spread out. When you got the linebackers and safeties and everybody's shooting gaps, it takes one guy to miss a block and then you're just totally blown up. But if you go to like a little RPO slant or RPO bubble screen or a little thing, I mean, you you have you have more options, and it kind of get keeps the defense back on their heels a little bit more, and and, and not uh, uh, gun over straight ahead, or maybe even go to a, a quick, you know, keep the what three wide receivers on the field and let Jake Fromm go under center and run a QB sneak because that keeps yeah, the safeties maybe. back. And uh, yeah. but uh, I think they I think they have to make a uh, this is two, this is two years that they've they've tried this uh, jumbo stuff, and they got they I think they got to get out of that. I think it's. It's it's not it's not been successful, and then it don't matter how much meat you get on the offense line. It's just I mean it, it's and then Kirby and Kirby says we got we got the best offense line in the country. We should be able to get that yard, but yeah, but you got you got six guys going up against nine, and it's not I mean it, it's kind of difficult. It, it's not a it's not a little it's not a fair yeah, scenario. Yeah. I think they got it, it, if you're going to do that, you got to get a full back in the backfield and 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 have yeah, that lead guy. Gets, they uh, they go, they better get it worked out because that punter keeps having trouble. You're gonna have to go for it a lot. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna touch on the punter, Gerald. But real quick, give us your score prediction for this game. We got another caller calling in, beeping oh, in okay. on you. Okay, uh, forty to ten. Forty to ten. You heard it here, guys. Gerald's calling a big one, covering the spread up there. In Athens. All right. Take it easy, Gerald. Thanks, Gerald. Yeah. Hey, Gerald. Good night. All right, brother. No, he's right though. We didn't we didn't touch on that. And uh, Camarda made him made up for himself on the second punt. First one. First one. Yikes. The second punt that nobody was backfielding that bounced twenty yards. In the stats, <laughs> he made himself up. Hey, look. I, 
I, I think I was it, giving him credit, Trent. You didn't have to call him out like that, man. Camarda can boom the punt. This is all mental. This is all mental. This is all uh, him rushing, his mind rushing, everything rushing, and he's just shanking balls. Uh, if you watch him in warm-ups, he can just flat out just boom spirals. I think he's – it's all a mental game. I think I think he really needs help in the mental game of the uh, of punting. I, it has nothing to do with his leg. It has nothing to do with uh, what he's capable of, of being on the field. I think it's just mental with him. And it, you've seen some Georgia kickers do that in the past and and just have that mental thing. Who, who's the kicker a few years ago that uh, went to a street where he just couldn't kick at all? I, I, Name them. Uh, I mean, there's they always happen like that. Are you talking about that Georgia? Was, was it Blair Walsh that went to that streak? Well, yeah, Blair Walsh in the NFL did. Yeah, well, the, but there was somebody at Georgia, and it, and they said that uh, what's his name that um, helped with the special teams, Kevin Butler, yeah. said that he was stepping his foot too close to the ball. It's it's all little things, but I think that it's mainly uh, it's mainly mental with Camarda because it, the kid can the kid can punt. He's just something something that that, that inner clock's just ticking a little bit too fast for him when he gets in those big situations. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you have to uh, bring him back down to reality. I don't know what that takes. I don't really know him that well. I'm not a coach. I'm not around him all the time. Is that benching him and putting out another guy a walk on to kick the first punt of a game and then that snaps it in his head? Is it something else? You know, every kid is different. So I think you have to get. In, inside of his head because right now he's inside of it. You need to gra- grab him and get him back out of it because, as we know, special teams, it's it's like a rolling snowball. It just gets I'm bigger. I'm telling you, Georgia would have probably the number one the number one special teams unit in the country if Camarda could get his game on. Yeah. Because your light's out in the kicking game. Your light, I mean, you're, you're putting every ball as a touchback. Um, I mean, we ain't feel. Uh, I mean, Georgia ain't feeling many punts, and Georgia ain't feeling many kicks, so it ain't that ain't a big difference. But just as far as the kicking game as a whole, it's 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 awesome. And I think if the punting game can get there, and you know, if you look at his average, he's still mid tier SEC. I mean, he, he's not he's not doing terrible. I think it's the uh, the shanks and the big time Correct. moments that's going to stand down. That's, that's, just, what, it's that's just, what I'm saying. Like the second kick, where had you not said anything, maybe people would have forgotten. That, that punt rolled 20 yeah. yards ahead. There ain't it's nobody going to forget that shank. I tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, no, so um, Hamwich says it doesn't stop Hot Rod, though. The, but Hot Rod's a totally different player, and obviously he's not inside his head. Yeah, he you, hasn't been inside his head. There, There is nobody on George. that football field other than maybe uh, other maybe Jake Fromm that is more confident in himself as a player than, than, uh, than Hot Rod. Glenn Tucker, he makes up a good point right here. He says, seems UGA is using Wolf for its tight end passes more than Charlie Warner. And then he says Warner's now being used for blocking. Warner's always been a great blocker. We've known that. We thought that his passing, his receiving was going to step up this year. Obviously, they tried to get to him the ball a couple times. Hasn't worked out. Obviously, they feel like Eli Wolf is the better option, even though Eli only had, I think, four receptions in Tennessee in his entire career. And he surpassed that, I think, in one game or tied at one. But... I think you've seen the script flipped a little bit. You you saw a Notre Dame. Uh, if you go back and watch Notre Dame game, you saw uh, all those bubble screens. You saw uh, Eli Wolf as a lead blocker. He whiffed two or three times, which made the offense look really bad in the first half because he missed some key blocks that would have opened it up, like Demetrius Robertson's bubble screen the other day that went for big yardage. That was Charlie Warner. They went to Charlie Warner, and Charlie Warner made, uh, made the lead block, and then he got behind all the offense linemen. That's the blocks that Eli Wolf missed against Notre Dame. So they kind of flipped the script and let uh, uh, Charlie Warner be that go-to blocker. And, and he, I, he looks good at I, it. And I think he's okay with that role. I mean, uh, I know every, every guy wants to be catching the ball, and I think Charlie Warner will be a weapon down uh, during the season. I think he'll he's going to have that game where he has five or six receptions. But he is the best blocking tight end, and you got you got to utilize him. And it's just like uh, Matt Carpenter coming out of the game against the Braves in the first inning. Shut up. Okay. All right. But he did it for the team. That's where I was getting at. Charlie Warner does it for the team. You, you, yeah, have you haven't seen, guys, I'm representing Cleveland, the other saddest sports town in America. That's where my uh, wife is from. Where's that at? Uh, this is Cleveland. The land? Is that where LeBron burned down? Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. So, I mean, if, if I didn't have enough misery down here, you know, I'd get it up there in Cleveland, too. So You can get it in Los Angeles today, too. Uh, Melissa says, good night, Enrique, Trent, Paul, and everyone. Good night, Melissa. Thanks for joining us. Uh, take it easy. James, where you been at, big James? I think James called in. <laughs> J- James says, uh, our defense is the most impressive unit I've seen so far. Different philosophy than last year. 
You know, I haven't watched, and we're gonna, that's what I kind of wanted to round the show off with, Trent, um, unless we have another caller come in, was I wanted to see who your top four was because right now, right now you've got about eight teams, eight to ten teams, I think, that legit have a shot. Yeah. Because you have Penn State still. You have Wisconsin still. You still have four SEC teams. You've got Clemson. I mean, yep. you've got a lot, a lot of teams. Oklahoma, Ohio State. Yep. Who's your I top mean, four? I think basing off, uh, if you want, if you're gonna base it off, oh, I got a little call. We'll, we'll, we'll cover top four here in a second. Okay. Call from Jason. To accept, press one. Jason, you're on with uh, Trent and Paul. How's it going, my man? I got a complaint. Oh boy. Why? Did you bring up Matt Carpenter? I was about to call in, and you just had to do that. <laughs> My bad, man. My bad. I'm trying to yeah, help I, myself, bro. I, I was gonna ask how your night's going, but I mean, we all or how your week's going, but it's going terrible, Jason. Yeah, it's, it's not great. Yeah, we all know what happened. Yeah. Um, I was calling because earlier you mentioned the um the bunch set with Tyler Simmons. Uh, yeah. If Yikes. I never see one of those plays again, I will be so happy. Those balls that get thrown to him, I would really rather than see go to a Demetrius or a George Pickens. I agree. Um, I don't think we're going to see those anymore, Jason, if if I'm being honest. Like, after the bad plays against Tennessee, I'd be very surprised if they go back to that with Simmons being the guy that's, you know, involved in that right. anytime it, soon. It just never seems to work. And I think you guys mentioned it last week with uh, James Cook. Uh, where he's basically – they only bringing him in to do an end-around behind the line of scrimmage, and that's only what he does. Quit yeah. doing that. It never works. Yeah, yeah. and let's – If you're going to use him, use him as a running back. No, you're exactly right. And let's remember now – Or a decoy. He, he's not from Georgia, okay? Like, he could very well just say, you know what, I'm not touching the ball enough. These guys are bringing in yeah. a five-star and another super good running back, you know, whoever they fill for that second spot. I'm not touching the ball enough. Oh, yeah. I'm going back home. I'm going to Florida State. My brother was, you know, that, the man, original. just took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, if you want to go to – yeah. And I, would, to I wouldn't State blame him. I w honestly, Jason, I wouldn't blame him because right now he's being so underutilized or not even remotely part of this offense when Tyler Simmons is and, like, passes to – Charlie Warner are that it would make me question it if I was him. I mean, I, right? I know. I know. In the off season, he all the reports were that he was happy at Georgia. Yeah, but this is your second season now. Of hey, I'm not getting the ball when right? I think I should be. Right? Why should I stay? Correct. the The first one, you know, you know should have. The first one was expected, right? You had running backs in front of you. You're a freshman. Right. And now we're halfway, close to halfway through the second year, and. I, th I mean, I think there's a moment in time where Cook's got to sit down and say, look, what position am I? I mean, am I a slot receiver? Am I uh, a he's running a back? He's a damn good running back. Uh, he, he's it, averaging but, like seven yards but a carry. But what, whatever you're going to play me at, use me there. If you want to utilize me in other ways, utilize me in other ways. But if I'm a running back right. on this team, let me run the ball behind behind center. <laughs> right, right. It, it's, why, why recruit all of this talent and then not use the talent that it's meant for? In the position that it's meant for. And and it's not um, like they are having a problem scoring, right? We're not talking about Auburn's offense or Tennessee's offense. Georgia has plenty of capable weapons, right? So they might not need to use them. But at the same time, he's such a valuable asset and a valuable weapon. He's more valuable than, you know, some other guys on your offense. You just need to get him the ball more. It's I mean, he, he's mind. more valuable than Tyler Simmons. He's more valuable than Matthew Landers. He's more valuable than yeah. either one of the tight ends. Oh, every – I, as, every time I hear Matt Lander's name, is he catching a ball? It seems like every time they're using him, it's just not a good play. Yep. Um, and it just seems like, why are we calling that play? Everybody at home can see it. The defense can see it. We all know it's not going to work. Why are you still calling this play? And I think he did it, have a couple of receptions. But I, I think that the key is, and and this is where one thing Kirby does, uh, has done, he, he really, it's almost like he's, paying dividends to the players who worked hard for you know so this long but right. there's a there's a point in time there's a where, line. You, where you, you gotta can't do that anymore. put your big boy pants you know? on and say right. look boy and it, it, this ain't uh, you're going to be used in this offense but you ain't going to be used 50 snaps a game you're not going to be our go-to guy right. you're not going to be our go uh, you know right. top two or three guy but you're going to be a role you, top player yeah and you said it with 
Brian Harry, and when he runs, he puts his head down. He's, every he's time been Samir doing White that, has gotten Jason. the ball, this guy's getting five, six yards every time he runs. Yep. The day I see Brian Herrien be your number two or your number one is going to be a very good day over Brian Herrien. Love Brian Herrien. I'm glad he stuck around. I remember watching his uh, home video where he caught, the, he threw the ball and caught the ball yeah, in his backyard. He caught himself, yeah. So I've been around, you know, we've been watching him for a long time, but he's just not as good as Brian, uh, as Zamir White. Nope. Nope. You're or, right. Or, or James Cook. Jason, are you, you a member of UJSports.com, Jason? Yeah. Yeah. I knew you were. You sound educated. And sound like you have all of the resources you need. Is that right, Jason? <laughs> I am. I yeah. I, I can hear it in your voice. You have everything you need, man. <laughs> so you keep doing you, yeah. man. What's your What's the final score, brother? South Carolina. Uh, uh well, let's see. Our Kirby and Kirby and Will Muschamp are friends, aren't they? Like best friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. This is gonna be another yeah, one of those get up by twenty one. And... thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and I just have one. I have one last question for Trent. Oh. <laughs> On the scale of Atlanta disappointments, this last playoff oh series with the Braves, oh where does it rank? Oh, Jason. Good night, Jason. It's, Bye, Jason. <laughs> All right. We didn't mean to hang up on Jason there. I think the call got disconnected. Jason, I'm so sorry. Oh, Jason, are you calling back? I don't think that's you, Jason. No, it's not Jason. Call from Matthew. To accept, press. Matthew, what's going on, man? Trent and Paul with you. Can you turn that background sound off a little bit, man? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah, man. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? Good, man. Yeah, I, I just figured I give you just figured I give you a call into the show. I've been watching tonight. What What did you say your name was again, man? Matthew. My name's uh Matthew. Matthew, Matthew. What's popping, man? What's going on in your life? Not a whole lot. Uh, you know, South Georgia. You know, South Georgia native down here. You uh, you know, big dog fan. What what city down there in South Georgia, brother? Uh, Albany area, um, Lee County area. Okay, so uh, you were you know Trent, Solomon. you know Trent Thompson uh, stomping grounds. Oh yeah, were you uh, uh, the trees? Were you at the bakery for uh, the cake down there in Lee County for Aubrey Solomon? He don't have a clue what you're talking about. No, I was not. <laughs> there was some type of cake, man. So over on UJSports.com, there was there was a we had a cake conspiracy, man. We we're trying to find out about this cake. <laughs> But anyways, man, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Not a whole lot. I was just going to uh, let you guys know I was watching the show tonight. Uh, no, I'm talking to the running backs and whatnot. Just figured I'd call, put my two cents in. Um, I know the backfield's pretty locked up, and, and I can understand totally and completely, you know, the angle that, that uh, you know, you guys stated with Cook about potentially going elsewhere with the lack of touches or whatnot. But hopefully – you know, he will uh he'll be utilizing the backfield a little bit better. And um I think, you know, Harrion is a good example for all running backs in college football to follow. I know that not everybody's Brian Herring and has the I guess patience to wait behind uh you know, other running backs in front of him, but uh, you know, he he's the uh epitome of what a Georgia running back should be and a Georgia player should be with loyalty. So I mean, hopefully they get you know the ball to cook some, but I, I do like uh, I do like the mix that they got going on at the running back position, and uh, in terms of abilities, you know I, I like the running back by committee and giving everybody a shot. And what do you guys think about that moving forward through the rest of the season? All right, Matt. Oh boy, had a frog <laughs> in my throat right there, Matt. We're gonna let you go. We're gonna answer on the show, man. Thanks so much. Sure. Yeah, man. It works. The running back by committee works. That's how Georgia's able to get all these five-star guys. Tell them, hey, come here. We'll save your legs. Go to the NFL. I saw somebody posted on Twitter. They said that Brian Herring's going to go to the NFL and have the freshest legs in the combine. The, uh, the, the, uh, Brian Herring's uh, one of those uh, type uh, runners. Why are you, why you stuttered right there to start off? Or was that me giving you? Oh, okay. it, That's similar to that Tay Crowder saying he's going to be NFL linebacker. Right. Uh, the – these kids, these are t two kids specifically that have really bought into the system and worked their tails off. Now, do I do not think they are NFL caliber. You know, you know Brian Heard runs hard. He runs hard for the University of Georgia. He's given everything he's had to the University of Georgia. Do I think he's NFL? No, I, I don't. I, I, I think, um, uh, you know, he was a step behind Elijah Holyfield. And Elijah, see, Elijah Holyfield, he's, is he even on the team? So, uh 
I don't think Brian Harry is an NFL back, but I do think he has been very good for the University of Georgia. I think he's busted his tail, and I think it's paying dividends right now. I think um, uh, Zamir White and DeAndre Swift, they're just different type backs. Uh, they're, they're the, you know, they have that vision and elusiveness, and, the, you know, it just, just the total package that you got to have to, to play at the next level. Um, I think Brian Harry doesn't, really have that uh, vision. I think he runs hard, like I said, but I think he puts his head down. I think he runs into a lot of dead ends, and he ends up somehow going through that dead end half the time and, and ended up with 10 yards. Right. But that don't work in the NFL. Um, you you got to have that patience and vision, and I think that patience and vision has improved this year. But I, uh, saying he's NFL caliber, uh, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. Uh. I'm not there yet either. But uh, right here, where was it? Oh, Ty Samuel. Ty Samuel says, Cook can be UGA's Percy Harvin. Be creative with the kid. 100% agree, Ty, but you got to get him in the game. you got to get the ball in his hands I mean, for him to be Percy Harvin. I think 100% he could be your Percy Harvin, but you got to get the ball it, in his hands. He, he's playing, he played 10 snaps this past Saturday. Yikes. In, in, in an offense where you, you, you had 75 plays in the game, so whatever that equates to. But you, you're exactly right. He doesn't have to be used every play, but every time Georgia puts him in, he, he's either going in motion. He's lining him up in the backfield, and they're putting him in motion. They're using him as a decoy. Stop trying to trick people and just give them give them the ball some. I mean, he's he. I don't want to be known as the decoy at the University of Georgia. I don't want to. That, that's not what I would be want, want to be known as. Uh, you, you, they're they're being they're they're being over creative. They're they're trying to think out of the box way too hard and I think you just have to play ball with uh James Cook line him up different places but stop trying to be cute and just you know run offense and let let him be a part of it guys you'll know if the coaches listen to the show because James Cook will have like 15 touches next week <laughs> and I'm gonna just let you know last week we called for the hurry up from Jake Fromm we saw it this week we're calling for more James Cook all right Kirby I know you're looking at me do your thing but now, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and bounce up out of here Let real, let's real go quick before four. we do that. You, you read my mind now, Trent? Yeah, I'm reading your mind. Oh, right. man, look at you. People want to know the top four. Yeah, yeah, top four in order. In order. In order. Damn right. You're not just going to name your top four. <laughs> Hell no. One, two, three, and four. Oh boy! I, 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 see, I wasn't prepared to do that. Oh, I did. I had to do it on Eleven Live. You're going to do yours. I've already got mine in my head. Come on, buddy. All right, we're, we're going to say I'm going to say my number four team. Oh, let's just go. Let's just go straight to the top. Okay, number one. I'm going to go. Um, <laughs> this is difficult for Trent, guys. I'm going to go Alabama number one. All right, boy, that took a while. Alabama is Trent's number one. I don't know what's longer. Trent trying to tell you his top four or ESPN look, look, I was, trying I was prepared to with the top, top four. I was prepared with a top four. And now no. for five commercial breaks until Trent gives you his number two. Trent, you're number two. I'm going to go Georgia number two. Wow. Two SEC teams up top. I'm going to do like they do on ESPN. Two SEC teams up top. One's going to have to fall. And Who's your number three? Back to you, Trent. Uh, I'm going to go with – we're looking at the season. I'm gonna go with Ohio State probably. Just, wow! Uh, because and it's not because of the offense, it's because of their defense. I think their defense is really good, um, and I think that's gonna play a key part down the line in, in these big games. That uh, Justin Fields wasn't that good Saturday night, and the defense is what led them to victory against Michigan State. And I think that defense is really good. Trent here trying to start a argument between Jake Fromm and and Justin Fields. You heard it here first with him going two three. Now back to you, Trent, for your number four. I'm going to go LSU number four. Just wow, three SEC teams in the top for Trent. But just because I think they have some good wins and they have another uh, potential uh, top ten win coming this Saturday against Florida. You, you, you They beat Texas. They've um, they beat some great teams uh, uh, throughout this year. Uh, who, who's the other team they played? They played uh, – Who are you talking about? LSU, they they beat Texas A&M, I think, but um, Texas, they beat Texas, but they they have some they have a couple quality wins, and and that's one thing that uh, like it, all these teams are going, all these rankings are going to rank out, uh, Clemson number one, Clemson number one, Clemson number two, whatever. I, 
if, if you're basing the play on the field right now, I think the top four teams in the country are, are those four teams. Um, of course, that can change. I think Oklahoma – I want to see Oklahoma play somebody um, with a pulse before I, before I put them up. I, I still question the defense uh, for Oklahoma. I, that's the reason why I have Ohio State up there. That's the reason why I have Georgia up there. Because they have they have good defenses to back up that offense. You saw what happened uh, with a quality defense against a, a running gun offense in the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago. So um, I would have Oklahoma five, Clemson six right now, um, and probably Wisconsin uh, right behind them. But um, that would be my top four. My top four, just so you guys know, uh, number one was Ohio State, two Bama, three Georgia, and four LSU. Now you're really starting to fight. I think Ohio State looks really good, man. They look really good. I, th- I think they look really I good. I know that Georgia fans don't want to hear that. I know they don't want to hear that. I, th- I think here's the problem. Ohio State looks really good. Here's dude. the problem with Ohio State. Michigan State's not a very good team. That's fine. I'm and cool and Michigan that. State really put the clamps down on Justin Fields in the first half. Yeah, but guess what? Ohio State's defense then stepped up. You're right. And that, that's where I think Ohio State's a top three team is because of their defense. I'm not, I'm not sold – for all you draw, I'm, I'm I'm not sold on Justin Fields as a quarterback just yet, as far as beating beating a top ten team or t- uh, SEC team, but I am sold on the Ohio State defense. Wow. With that, guys, we're going to go ahead and give you our score predictions and get Trent out of my house. You, you, what, you tell me what what did you think? You about, think about Fields? Oh no, I think Fields is great. Now I'm not I'm not saying anything about Fields, but he is a one read quarterback. When when somebody takes that initial read away from him, when you got a team like Georgia or somebody that's going to take that initial read, what's he going to do? Run? Oh. Have you seen anybody take that I'm, initial read? I'm over? singing to calm myself down. Anyways, guys, you've been playing too much Madden. <laughs> Anyways, guys, <laughs> uh, I think the spread's twenty four and a half, something like that. Same spread against Tennessee. Trent's going over. So you're saying Georgia, Georgia's going to win by more than twenty four and a half? What's your final score? I'm going to say, just because I think he's going to take it, I'm going to say 38 to 10. That gets you – that gets you uh, – that, that gets you my – That gets you, that gets you, gets you paid. 38 10 from Trent. I got to send my prediction in to Roddy, so I want to make sure that I have not sent it in yet so I get to name a score. I'm going to go 45 14. 45-14. Yep, still covers, still covers, all good. Enrique, thanks for being here all night with us, man. Melissa May, thank you. Byron, thank you. And hey, come join us at UGASports.com, and we'll talk a little more tonight if you want to. Boom. That sounds uh, kind of freaky, but sounds good to me. Um, <laughs> What's it going there? <laughs> all right. But, no, anyways, guys, no, uh, make sure you like and subscribe the channel, guys. We're really trying to build up this YouTube thing. You are crushing my ears right now with that. Thank you, Trent. Uh, but – yeah, make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube page, guys. Get over to UGASports.com for your anything, Georgia sports, recruiting football, news. recruiting news. We didn't even touch on any of the recruits that are going to be there. We will talk about it. You've been fired. What? Don't worry about it. You've already been fired, Paul. <laughs> that a boy, Roddy. Damn it. <laughs> well, don't have to write that, guys. But, no, get over there to UGASports.com, guys. Talk hey, to us on the vent about the football team on the vault to talk about recruiting with Trent and Jake over there. Some visitors coming in, Trent. We're going to talk about it next week over on UJ Sports. We'll give you guys a little sneak peek uh, next Thursday as well. But, again, guys, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll know we're on Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here in my mom's basement. Your mom lives here? No, this is my house. (laughs) See y'all. See you.